Monday, December the 9th, 2019. This is the Gold Nose Podcast hosted by myself, Gregory McCoy. And I got several things I want to get into today about the um, Florida State Seminoles. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, Mike Norvell. I think one of the top things on his list should be try to convince Cam Akers, Marvin Wilson, or Tamori and Terry to stay for their senior years. I don't think you're going to get any of them to stay, but, I mean, it's worth a try because all those guys are impact players. And if you can get at least one, I mean, that would be a tremendous uh, a tremendous accomplishment. Um, I think uh, you need to be a hard-nosed coach. Um, Willie Taggart was a player's coach. And, you know, these guys, for whatever reason, just didn't go out and and play like a well-disciplined football team. And I just think that goes back to Willie Taggart being a player's coach. Um, I've said this on many occasions, and I'll keep saying it until, you know, either Mike Norvell or, or somebody acknowledges it. Florida State is a soft football team, physically. Um, you know, Clemson, LSU. Ohio State, Oklahoma, the teams at the top right now, you just look at their players on the field, and physically they're just on another level. Um, their strength and conditioning is just on another level. So I think from now until the first game is September 5th, I think you can be the most well-conditioned football team in the country. Again, that goal is attainable, like I've said in previous episodes, and that has to be one of the top priorities for Mike Norvell. You know, be a well-disciplined football team. Be a well-conditioned football team. Be a very cerebral football team. And, you know, I think the fan base would be able to accept you know, whatever it happens, um, you do those three things, you know, they will see brighter days are coming. Um, I want to step back a little bit, go back to Willie Taggart. Um, is Willie Taggart back at South Florida or will he be back at South Florida? Maybe. Um To me, he should have never left Oregon. I mean, he was in a great situation at Oregon. He should have stayed there. Um, You had Phil Knight, you know, the billionaire, basically infusing money into that program. And you basically, Oregon does everything that Florida State is too cheap to do. And it was just a great situation for him. He should have stayed there. He had a quarterback. I mean, I think at the time that he left, he was in the top 10 as far as recruiting. He was in a great situation. Um, and certainly the 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 um, reputation of Florida State for being cheap when it comes to, you know, providing the very best that a coach needs to succeed um, is out there. Um, should he ever been considered – or hired for the job? Uh, I I don't think he should have. Because overall, when he was hired, he had a losing record. I understand he rebuilt Western Kentucky. He rebuilt South Florida. But, you know, this this guy, um, he, he has a reputation for not being organized. Um, he has a reputation for being lackadaisical when it comes to 
game day this um uh, game day decisions and uh, i i just i just wish we could have went in a different direction uh 2 years ago we probably would have been a lot better off right now definitely um what is willie tagger's legacy his legacy is going to be stopping the bowl streak it is as sad as that <laughs> may sound or how harsh that sounds that's his legacy I think that's what Florida State fans are always going to remember him for is stopping the bowl streak and just hyping up this fan base in his um, press conference, his uh, initial press conference when he got hired and just total letdown. Um, So that's that's just how I'm going to remember Willie Taggart in it anyway. I got a few players here that I want to get to as far as their legacy. Um, And when I do these legacy things, I don't know if they're going pro or if they're staying. I'm just saying, in my opinion, a fan. This is a podcast by a fan for fans. I'm not an analyst, a reporter, an insider. So I just want to put that out there and let everybody know. Um, Tamori and Terry, what is his legacy to me? Great deep threat. Not a good route runner. Um, he wasn't used as a true freshman. Um, he could have definitely helped us that f- uh, first year under Jimbo. Um, for whatever reason, Jimbo wouldn't let him get on the field. Um, and then sadly, you know, if he goes pro, I think he's going to be remembered for having alligator arms. In that Florida game, um, he just didn't put all effort into catching that one deep pass. Uh, but overall, you know, one of the um, best receivers to come through. Um, tremendous speed, a great deep threat. And, uh, you know, he, he he he's not one of my top five receivers all time at Florida State, but he was definitely a guy that I won't forget. Um, Hamsa Nazruddin, what is his legacy? A uh, ferocious tackler, bad in pass coverage. Um, in my opinion, he will be a box safety or a weak side linebacker in the pros. Um, he sustained a devastating knee injury in the Florida game. So I don't know if he's going to medical red shirt or go pro. My advice to him is to stay at Florida State where all expenses will be paid. Whereas if you go pro, you don't know what's going to happen. They could draft you. You could um, not get drafted and you're just out there. I say stay at Florida State, do all the rehab that you can get for free and try to come back and have one solid season and then go pro. Um when Marvin Wilson got hurt, I think he kind of took over as the hard heartbeat of the uh, defense. Um, showed great leadership on that side of the ball. And um, he, he he's not one of my top five safeties of all time at Florida State. But again, he's a guy that I will never forget. Um, another topic, or not really a topic, just another little feature piece that I wanted to put out there. My top five Seminoles football players that had tremendous hype coming out of high school but did not live up to the billing, in my opinion. Um, Number five, Xavier Lee. Um, I think he set every passing record in Florida high school history coming out of high school. And when he got to Florida State, he couldn't beat out Drew Weatherford. And it was just sad to see. I mean, he he I don't think he ever really got to display his talents because Drew Weatherford, I mean, was the better quarterback. Um, so it's, it's really not much to say on Xavier Lee. He just he never could get on the field. Um, number four, Nick Maddox. Um, my high school team, 
played against Nick Maddox my senior year in high school. He was a freshman in high school. And, you know, I didn't know who the, who the guy was. So, but after I had graduated and years went on, he became just a tremendous running back. He was like the number one player coming out of high school. And, you know, when he got to Florida State, um, they, they converted him to a receiver. He couldn't do anything as a running back. And he, I mean, just another guy, another, all these guys that I'm going to name were five star recruits. Um, he just didn't live up to the hype. Um, just potential unrealized. And, um, you know, it was just sad to see that you got a player of that caliber and he didn't live up to the hype. Number three, Fred Rouse, another tremendous high school football player. I think he got in some trouble when he was at Florida State and ultimately got kicked off the team. But when he got on the field, I mean, he just showed flashes of brilliance. Um, And I just, you know, when I seen this kid play, man, I just thought like, wow. This guy's going to be awesome. Then he got kicked off the team for getting in trouble. So, again, another player that five-star recruit didn't live up to the hype. Number two, and this one, man, this one, it just it just tears me up. Adrian McPherson. This guy had such a bright future before he started doing that stupid stuff. I mean, he... <laughs> He he had potential to be like the greatest quarterback to ever come through Florida State. And he just, you know, he just threw it all away, man. Um, I forget what he did. I don't know. I think it was check fraud or something he did. I'm not sure. Um, but just just the uh, I, even right now as I'm doing this podcast, I'm just shaking my head like this guy has so much potential. He just threw it away because he wanted to be an idiot. Um, so, again, another five-star player that had tremendous potential, but he couldn't live up to the hype. My number one player that was – a five-star recruit, tremendously hyped coming out of school. I mean, they're showing press conferences all over the country at a time where they didn't do this about this kid um, coming to Florida State. And that's going to be Lorenzo Booker out of California. Um, I mean, one of the most hyped players coming out of high school in recent memory. Um and um, he he, I think he had almost uh, twenty six hundred yards rushing. He's in the top ten all time at in Florida State for rushing, but just wasn't used correctly. Um, he's not in my top five of running backs all time, of course, but he he just didn't live up to the hype, in my opinion. Um. When he was out there, he made plays. He um, but he I don't even think he was the guy. I think Travis Miner was still the starting running back when he got there. Um, so Lorenzo Booker, his legacy was just he he really didn't create one. I mean, I can't even as I rack my even as I rack my brain right now, I can't think of any. You know, standout plays that made him uh, an unforgettable player. So um, my honorable mention on this, on this particular um, subject, uh, Callahan Bright, tremendous player. Um, He made it to the NFL. I don't think he stayed that long in the league, but... um, he really didn't do anything of great significance at Florida State. Then he got drafted, or I don't know if he was drafted or undrafted, but he made it to the league. I think he was just more of a – he was a ferocious player now. Don't get me wrong, but, you know, he could have been one of the all-time greats. 
And to me, he just didn't live up to the hype. And this is going to surprise a lot of people. But the hype that this dude <laughs> uh, came to Florida State with, and again, this is the honorable mention, uh, Ernie Sims, um, just an all-world linebacker coming to Florida State, didn't live up to the hype in my opinion, ferocious tackler, um, he did go to the pros, he had a, a great cu first couple of years, I think he played for the Lions and the Cowboys, um, so I, he could have been, he could have been up there with Derrick Brooks and Marvin Jones, in my opinion. And I even had him on my all time team. That's how much I thought of him, but he didn't live up to the hype in my opinion. Lastly, Travis Minor. He broke all of Ward Dunn's records when he, uh, leaving, uh, New Orleans, Louisiana and came to Florida State. So when he, Took over the, the the helm as a star running back. I just knew this guy was going to take off and just be tremendous. And he made some plays. He made some plays. He had tremendous speed. But um, I think he got on with the Dolphins. But, again, he, he just – and he I think he's in the top ten all-time rushing at Florida State. But he didn't – he's not Dalvin Cook or Warwick Dunn. And I thought – Coming out of high school, he was going to be in that category. So that's going to wrap up episode nine. Um, again, I appreciate the tremendous support that um, the people, you guys, have given this podcast. Again, it's available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. Please um, find it on those platforms. Review, rate, subscribe, and I'll see you at episode 10. Thank you for listening.